So today we're going to be building a pretty awesome little budget gaming PC. Stick around to find out more. Hi, I'm Andrew from TechTeamGB and today we're going to take a look at building a pretty awesome little fairly budget gaming PC. All the parts we used are listed in the comments that are the description down below and if you do want to buy them there should be Amazon affiliate links right next to those uh, if you want to build this system. Obviously there are different parts that you can change out such as the CPU, um, well you can change out everything but we recommend um, if you want to go higher budget then change out the CPU um, or if you want to go lower budget change out the SSD to something like a hard drive. Now we used um, a lot of different parts here, so uh, parts from Intel such as the Pentium G3420, we used Gigabyte's uh, Z97 um, MX Gaming 5 board uh, as they provided us with a lot of these components. I um, also want to thank XFX and also um, Crucial for the RAM that they provided um, and yeah it's a pretty awesome little build. So first things first, we're going to install the CPU in the board. I recommend doing a test fit of all the components outside of the case uh, and pretty much building most of it outside the case before you put it in as it's a lot easier than doing it in a crowded space such as the case. Now, um, on the CPU socket there, you're going to no need to make a note of the uh, little you know, triangle sort of thing that's on the corner as there's a little gold triangle on the CPU and that indicates which way the CPU will go in. This one is a socket 1150 um, chip, which means that the pins are all in the motherboard and it's just gold connectors in the back, but I'd still recommend not touching the back of the CPU. Hold it by its sides and it's a lot easier. Just drop it in and, uh, well, don't drop it in, place it in, but it shouldn't require any pressure to go in, it should just sit nicely, and then you're going to drop that um, bracket, push the arm down, it's going to be very difficult to do, but it's still uh, just push it down as hard as you can. Clip it under that and then you're good. <laughs> Now this power supply is a semi-modular power supply, which means that it doesn't come with all the cables attached to it, which is good for cable management, but not necessarily good for the first time PC builder who might not be sure which p cables to use. We'll be telling you which cables you need to add on uh, in this build for the parts that we've used, and anything else you can uh, fairly guess yourself or um, give us a shout in the comments down below. Now the case you're using is a Bitphoenix Prodigy M, this is a M80X case which fits the motherboard we've got and uh, personally um, stick around for the full review that should be coming out fairly shortly but I'm not a huge fan of this. It looks amazing when you have it all built up but um, it is a little bit difficult to build in and does require a bit of pre-planning. The first thing you're going to need to do is take off this hard drive bracket which is where you're going to install a 3.5 inch or maybe even a 2.5 inch hard drive if you want one. In this build we're not going to be using one but I will show you how to install one in this case later. We're going to be using some aftermarket fans, they're actually Bitfinex Spectre Pros, um, they're the red LED versions and we're going to be installing those as well uh, just to give you an idea of what it's like installing a case, uh, installing a, a fan sorry. Now this uh, case uses a power supply bracket, make sure to keep this bracket and the screw that screws it in very handy as you will need it. Also in the box of accessories comes a lot of, our, basically a big bag of screws and you're going to need to sift through those and find what's called motherboard standoffs. The board we're using has 8 standoff holes which means you're going to need to install standoffs just like this. It does come with a little tool that you can use to tighten them up and I'd recommend doing that very highly. The rear I.O. shield is something that you'll need to install. All you have to do is push it in place and make sure it's the right way around. It's very easy to do and it clips in very audibly. To install the motherboard I'd recommend putting it in at an angle just like this so that you can basically put it in easy and not you know, hit anything and uh, basically then just screw in all the uh, holes um, that you've got your standoffs under. So there should be, uh, if you're using this board there are 8 screws that you'll need uh, so make sure to fish those out of the uh, little bag as well. Now this power supply mount was very difficult for us. Um, the power supply we're using is an XFX semi-modular 650 watt uh, triple X edition, but the pass-through cable that this case uses is right angled, and if the connector on the power supply is the wrong way around, you can literally spend, I think I spent about a full hour just trying to get the power supply connected. Once I did though, um, I did manage to uh, forget that I'd need to put the 8 pin power connector for the motherboard um, through the back hole, which meant I actually needed to disconnect the uh, 
well, the pass-through cable connector um, to be able to actually get it past the motherboard. It's a bit of a design sort of almost flaw, I guess, but um, if you plan it ahead better than we did, then uh, yeah, you should be good. Make sure to plug in the 8-pin EPS power connector, that's the one I was just talking about that goes in the top left-hand corner, and also the 24-pin power connector, which goes in the right-hand corner just over there. It's very easy to do, they only go in one way, and normally you can see a little tab where the, power, the clip goes on, so that indicates which way. Normally for the 24 pin the uh, clip goes on the outside and for the 8 pin the clip goes on the top. Now we're going to install a 2.5 inch SSD. This is a SanDisk uh, Ultra 2 uh, 250 gig SSD. It's very easy to install. Um, I'm only going to use two screws today but you can use four screws especially if you've got a mechanical hard drive. Um, all you have to do is literally put it in, lift up the front so it's a bit easier and then screw it in. Make sure that the SATA connectors, SATA data and SATA power are facing you when you uh, have the uh, you know case like you just saw. Now if you want to install a 3.5 inch hard drive you can do. Um, this 500 gig Seagate pipeline drive which is rather old actually um, is very easy to install. Just put the two mounts and then slide it in backwards. As you can see the holes line up very nicely so it literally just put the two screws up, put uh, four screws on uh, with the little rubber mounts, shove it in and push it backwards. Now we're going to be installing a CPU cooler. Most of the CPU coolers do come with their own mounting hardware, although if you are using Intel stock one, then it's a lot easier than uh, anything else, as you literally just drop it on, push the four pins down, and turn the, turn the little pins to the side. Um, make sure you do plug in the fan connectors, though, uh, as you'll want that fan to be spinning. Most uh, CPU coolers come with back plates. Um, this one does, and the first thing you're going to need to do is screw in two screws just to hold it in place. I recommend using one hand around the back to hold the bracket in place, and then another hand in the f uh, inside the case to screw them on. Once you do, um, you're going to for this CPU cooler, the NMX ETS T40-VD. Um, you're going to want to basically put these little uh, brackets across the top, screw them in, and then check that the mounting bracket that goes through the CPU cooler is going to fit. Now, we're going to be using some Coolmaster thermal paste just because I had that lying around and, uh, and open, um, but you will only need a very small amount. Something like a small grain of rice, like that size, is all you need. That's actually probably a little bit too much. Um, and uh, yeah, all you have to do is drop the CPU cooler in, um, put that bracket over the top, make sure it's in the right place, and then screw it in. Make sure it's nice and tight, as the tighter it is, the uh, easier it is for the heat to dissipate from the CPU into the heat sink and then out the case. Next up, um, I just want to talk about when you have got your CPU cooler installed, um, there might be some clearance issues you may have, um, so just the demonstrating with this uh, AMD RAM here, um, not that we're using that, we're actually using 8 gigs of Crucial RAM, um, but just to demonstrate, you may need to push it over uh, one slot, and uh, either way, for dual slot RAM, I definitely recommend using the two grey slots or the two black slots. As you can see, we are using Crucial's um, Ballistics RAM, uh, Ballistics Sport actually, um, and this is the 60 100 megahertz kit of eight, uh, four gig dim each. Now, we're going to be using an extra cable here. This is the only extra cable you will need if you're only installing the parts we're telling you, um, which is just a SATA power cable. Um, SATA power cables look like this, um, they're very simple, they're fairly wide, they have five uh, wires coming out the back of them, and you just plug it into the drive. It only goes in one way, it's got a little right angled sort of L shape at the bottom, and it's very simple to plug in. Fans are something very difficult to do if you're fairly weak. Um, they're basically what you're doing is screwing untapped, uh, screw it, basically putting a metal screw through untapped plastic, which means you're effectively ripping away at plastic as you tighten it up. Um, this actually took me a good 20 minutes of hard elbow grease to do, so I recommend spending a little bit of time trying to get these tight. Make sure that it, they aren't you know, loose or t at all because they will wobble around and be very annoying. Now for a graphics card, the first thing you do need to do is push a little pin, a uh, little sort of fly down in the middle. Um, if your board is a little bit different, then do check the manual and you know, other guides as well. But uh, after that, take out the uh, blanking plates at the back and then literally just line it up and drop it in. Some cases you may need to uh, screw the graphics card in at the back, but this one has a little sort of capture plate that you just push down and then do a thumb screw there. Um, it's a little bit easier, but uh, yeah, it's still pretty good. 
Now you are going to want to click uh, or push in the power connector. Um, that's very easy as well. It only goes in one way and normally the tab is uh, at the bottom. But for this card it's actually the other way around to make it a little bit easier to get out. The power connector is labelled PCIe and uh, yeah, you couldn't miss it if you wanted to. So to connect all the front panel connectors in this case, um, yeah, I'm not going to show it because it, yeah, this footage had to be sped up by a thousand percent just to make it even usable. Um, it took me a, a very long while, and yeah, I, I, I wouldn't recommend um, this case when you have everything installed. I'd recommend perhaps taking out the graphics card and put, possibly even plugging in the front panel connectors before you plug in the um, the graphics card and heatsink. And uh, yeah, once you do that, it is uh, all right, but it is quite difficult. And uh, yeah, once you do get it all connected, you will want to kind of rest your head a minute. So once that's done, you are literally ready to install your operating system. I recommend Windows 7 for now, as it's probably the best operating system at the moment. Although if you have a key for Windows 8.1 or something, then you feel free to use that. You can also use Linux, um, as uh, yeah, it's a lot more customizable uh, if you're interested in that. But for a beginner use, I'd recommend Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. Now, with this, with this GTX 960, you can play all your games on high, which is very, very nice, and I do like it a lot. Um, as you can see, this is reaching around about 100 FPS in Bioshock, and if you want to see the full review for the 960, click the Bioshock logo, or the, the screen uh, for Bioshock logo, um, right now, and uh, hopefully you can see that. So thanks for watching this build guide, I hope you enjoyed it, and please do let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Um, I do really like the look of this case once it's built, but uh, yeah, it's um, it's a difficult build. But anyway, thanks for watching. As I said, do leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you dislike it. Please do subscribe if this is the first Texan GB video you've seen. We do have a lot more to come and a lot more content that you can check out right now. Anyway, as I said, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. That should be sometime next week, probably around about Monday or even Saturday. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video, you've probably seen enough of me already so I'm going to go away. Right after I say, if you haven't already liked or disliked, just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me. And then also, um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out. Um, and yeah, obviously it shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us, check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it from me, so we'll see you all in the next video.